Hello, this video is to show you some upgrades I've made to my uh, circular sock knitting machine. I've had these ideas kicking around for a little bit and I finally got a chance to make them. Um, all the files will be under a remix on the Thingiverse site and I will have the full Fusion 360 model on there too. So the first uh, upgrade was for the, the mounting method on the crank arm. And originally we had it to where we used what's called a, a shaft coupler. And you had to glue that into the arm and glue it into the crank gear. And I realized that wasn't, you know, optimal for everybody. So uh, what I did is I, I modified them with some holes so you can use these instead. And these are called flange shaft couplings. And so they'll allow you to to bolt these onto those plastic pieces and then uh, you can use a set screws to tighten it down to the uh, metal shaft. And so the, the thing to note about that, this is that these holes are four millimeter where I've used three millimeter on everything else. Um, so you need to be aware of that. And so when you do it, you'll have to make a new shaft, uh, and I've got, I, th I think it's about two and a half inches long, and I obviously didn't get a chance to, to make this. Um, my method's still working, my original method's still working for me. Um, so if, if you want to uh, print this, you know, just beware, I haven't tested it yet, and you might just leave a comment on Thingiverse for everybody to say if if all my dimensions work out all right. But it should be okay. I would print uh, this guy before I do this guy and, and test all the holes to make sure everything lines up. So you'll still want to make, you know, your shaft, you'll, you want to make sure you use flats everywhere you have a set screw on there. You still want to, you know, file or grind flats on there. You still need that or it's going to slip on you. Okay, let's go to the next one. We've got a, um, the, so the bracket for the counter. Originally you had it to where, um, you know, the bracket, you couldn't position it. And it was hard, the, the display on here is hard to read it, it, even a little bit of a, at an angle. So I modified it so you can uh, pivot this guy. So I've got two pieces on there. The original, you've got um, this piece here, which is mounts to your shaft. And then you've got a T-shaped piece here. And so on this guy, well, that wire's kind of in the way. On this guy, this is the surface that you'll put down on your print bed. And on the T-shaped piece is this back piece that will be on the print bed. And so this one's got a, a long screw. You've got a captive nut in your T in your T piece, and then you've got two screws that bolt onto your uh, your counter. And on your counter, I don't think it's got any metal on there, metal threads. So I believe I just used uh, you'll use those screws to kind of uh, thread the hole while you're screwing it in. So just be careful. Don't uh, over tighten that or it's going to strip out on you. The other thing is, I don't know if you can see them, I've used some wire ties down here, and you'll want to use that kind of like a strain relief so this, this wire isn't always flexing on you whenever you're adjusting it, because that'll break those leads on there eventually. So you can, you can pivot this up and down, and you can twist it side to side on there. So let's see what's next. Next we've got um, on our yarn stand, uh, I've modified the brake on there and originally we had we used a, a metal wire on there and that's pretty traditional and it worked okay but the problem was this bend in there would notoriously get kind of wedged in there and make this tough to uh, to twist on there so I thought it'd be easy just to make a plastic uh, brake on there and so you can use the same Y piece here, this guide, you can use the same one. It'll, it'll still need the, uh, the brass tubing in there to use as your bearing surface. And you'll just want to make sure it's very, very loose in there. And so uh, the metal piece is, is a 1 8 inch drill rod. 
and I think it's like one and an eighth inch long on there, but it's just a straight piece now. You don't have to do any bending on it. And then if you can see it on here, I've got the, the part where it mates up to here. I've got some teeth on there, so hopefully that'll hold the yarn in place a little better. And then if you need a little bit more uh, friction on there, you can always glue a little piece of some rough sandpaper on this surface here. To print this guy, print this surface down on your bed and use a brim on there. And since this is going to kind of be tall and uh, thin on there, and then you probably have to drill out um, the hole on both sides with, with a 1 8 inch bit. Um, but uh, it should just be a friction fit in there. Like I said, both of these, both of these guys should be really, really loose and easy to pivot. Okay, what do we got next? All right, the last one is um, I updated the tension cam. And originally, um, when I had it, if you remember, I had a you know a pointer and a gauge on there. And I'll be the first to admit those were bad ideas. They didn't work very well. And if you watch any of my videos, you can tell that I never used that. So I wanted a way that you could kind of, you know, have some kind of pointer on there as a guide to see where you're at. So I thought I could just extend this guy up past there and use that surface as kind of the guide. And then you could on here, um, Put, a, put some marks on here. So my idea was I've got some grooves on both sides and was my idea was to put some masking tape on there and then you could put pencil marks on there to mark uh, your, your favorite positions on there. You could also, they sell like a, an adhesive backed ruler um, that you could, you could uh, put on there. I would probably try to find, I know they've got some that are made out of vinyl out of a plastic and those are a lot thinner. This is a really shallow um, groove on there. But I would use that over the metal ones. The metal ones may be too thick on there. So let's see. When you get... I've got, I've got two on here that I've made. So when you originally get this, probably what you want to do first is put this up against your, your cylinder. And just make sure that the surface matches well on there that it hasn't warped any and then what you want to do is you want to let's look at this guy this is a little better you want to feel all the surfaces that touch anything like this inside rubs against the um, rubs against the cylinder and then this outside rubs against the clamshell feel that make sure uh, it doesn't have any bumps in it if it does have bumps just just use some fine sandpaper like 220 or above and you'll want to lightly sand that. You're not trying to remove any material, you're just trying to make it smooth so there's no bumps on there. And the next thing you want to do is you want to, to fit this guy in here. This should be a really nice fit inside that groove on there. You don't want it to where it's so wide that it's going to be wobbly on there. You want a nice tight fit that, that barely uh, twist on you. So you'll need to sand you know this surface here just a little bit and this surface here just till you get a nice nice slide fit and it's it moves up and down really easy on you. Uh, so the next thing you want to do is uh, make sure this guy goes all the way down and if you look at it this this lip here should come all the way down to the top of that clamshell there. Let's see if we can, there we go. So that lip should come all the way down to there. And if it doesn't, go through and make sure, you know, check your ears down here to make sure they're not hitting on anything. And make sure you don't have anything down in your, these, this has a pocket down on the bottom here, so make sure it can it can sit all the way down. And once that's all the way down, what you'll see is, you know, if you take a needle, that needle should just barely fit. This one it, it doesn't quite fit, but this with all, all the way down, that should be the bottom where you have. If you're not if you're not going all the way down, you need to check and see why 
So um, another thing while we're looking at this, I've seen a couple people do this, but this is how the cams, the uh, up throw cams sit in there. I've seen some people have these reversed. There's a left and a right hand, but this, this angle on the up throw cam should match the angle on the uh, clamshell. So make sure you don't have that reversed because some people had that going up real high on there. So the next thing is everybody's favorite, sanding. You'll want to sand this surface here, this surface here. And it'll work without sanding, but it'll work a lot better if you sand it. And it'll work even more better, more better, that's nice. It'll, it'll work even better if you uh, use some lubrication on there. Um, so here's a tip for sanding. You know, when you, when you start out, get a, uh, a file. There's one of these nail files, and this is a coarse and medium on there. And what I did was uh, it, um, used it on the coarse side, and then you can rub that on there almost to where all your bumps are gone on there, all your ridges are gone. Then you want to go over to the medium side and do the same. And um, then I would work my way up to 220 and maybe 320 or 400 on there. And you can kind of see how smooth I've got, I've got that on there. Finally, when you're done, um, it'll probably still be just a little fuzzy on that surface. And what you can do is take a soft rag on there, soft cotton cloth, and just rub that hard and, and fast. And that'll burnish that surface and it'll smooth, and it'll smooth that out a little bit. But that's key. You want to make sure to try to smooth that out, and that'll help you quite a bit. All right, the next thing you do want to do is get you a, a long screw to put in there, and you'll want to cut it to length so you can still get to this, this screw here. Um, after you've got that, get a washer on there, and then underneath you'll want to do a washer and then a nut underneath there. And what you want to do is glue this nut on there because you want this guy to rotate real easy. Well, not real easy, but you want to rotate fairly easy, but not have any play this way. You don't want any play on there. So just tighten it up a little bit while you're gluing it on there. And um, next, what you want to do is you'll want to do this little shelf piece I've got here. And that is printed, this guy is down on your print bed. And these guys was the same as before. This, this surface here is down on your print bed. But this shelf, after you make it, you'll want to, you'll want to glue a nut in there and, and pull it in from the bottom here. Because when you print it on the bed with this surface, this, this, you know, your first layer or two might squeeze out a little bit and be tight to pull in from there. So pull in from this side and you'll want to glue that in place with some 30-minute uh, epoxy. And what I did was I... I first, before I glued it in there, I took that nut and I rubbed all surfaces and all flats on there with, with some sandpaper just to give it a nice place for the glue to glue to catch to, to adhere to. And then I, pull, then I uh, pulled that in. Then the next thing you want to do is make sure that nut is in there square. You know, you want to put a, I'd put a long screw in there and make sure when the screw's in there, you know, it's not twisted like that. And you want to look at it from this way too and make sure it's not twisted. And when it when your screw's in there, you want it straight like that, straight like that. And you can use that screw to kind of wiggle and position that nut in there properly whenever uh until it dries. So I realize this you know this shelf probably isn't the best method on there, but I I didn't have much options other than trying to change the the, the clamshell on there, and um, so this this was my my best idea for that right now. So once once you've got your nut in there, you want to glue this shelf piece onto your clamshell, and you want it set down from the top of the clamshell, just about the thickness of your your nut and your washer on there, so that can come all the way down and sit down on there flat like that. And then when, when you, while it's gluing it on there, what I would do 
is put your uh, tension cam in there and screw screw that in there so what it will do is it will um, it'll kind of align that shelf left and right while it's while it's drying on there um, so okay so some tips on this make sure whenever you're adjusting this guy this guy you gotta loosen this guy first so make sure that's loose uh, what was the next I had a couple more yeah whenever you're adjusting this I would also remove your weights uh, from your sock you know just lift them up so there's there's not a lot of tension on this guy while you're adjusting this you know these could probably break fairly easy if you put a lot of uh, a lot of force on there the next thing uh, to know is this is reverse acting and what I mean by that is whenever I screw this in and by screw I'm gonna go clockwise on there if I screw that in that's gonna bring this tension cam down which is gonna make my stitch looser so tightening here makes a looser stitch so just keep that in mind and I think that's it so if you have any comments please post them on Thingiverse have fun